Oh, I just watched the Meet the Press interview with Kamala Harris and uh, Hey everybody, it's Tom with Tom's Talk Show and like many of you who are who don't like yourself, had bad self-esteem uh, I watched the uh, Meet the Press interview with uh, Kamala Harris and uh, just, I mean, the, I don't know, and I, they had some anchors. I didn't watch all of the commentary afterwards because um, everybody's just spewing their own political ide political ideology afterwards because it's just news, it's on NBC, so it's always geared towards, you know, that kind of liberal side of the press, even though they had, you know, people who said, oh, they're, you know, uh, they're conservative Republican side, but there were, I think there was only one of those and immediately, you know, everybody else in the panel would, you know, attack them and, and stuff. So it, it really, you know, just got irritating. I'm not really going to play any of it because... Um, I don't want to be that irritated and, and frustrated again, but just kind of go over some of the points and different things that were brought up that I think really need to kind of be called out. So she, they, they continually and are not going to stop with January 6th. Um, if you go over, actually Loud with Crowder over there, they have all of the statistics about, you know, how many people died or whatever, because they keep saying all these people died or no. No one actually died of that other than one woman who died by being shot by a either police or security, right? Who was one of the marchers who went down there. All the other people died of uh, heart attacks, strokes, or something else afterwards, well after the fact, even though they're trying to call that, you know, differently. You know, the, the, that's what's so amazing about, you know, Crowder is that he, if you want some facts about a subject, you can go there and then you can... It will help you to find the facts. You can do some other research after that and see how they relate to those. But typically what I found is that those facts there are typically correct. So they continue to bring up, you know, January 6th. They continue to bring up, you know, everybody's an election denier, you know. And I think definitely, you know, whether whether YouTube decides to take this video down or, or not, I, you know, whether you want to say that the election was stolen or not stolen or whatever. There was every election uh, in the in the world has some fraud in it, right? I mean, when my uh, brother-in-law, who's now passed away, um, years ago, he was in Nevada, in one county in Nevada. He uh, was on the county board and. They were looking over, they had gotten voter results, and there was an empty lot where like 60 people had voted. So why do we have an empty lot with 60 people voting? This makes no sense. The mailing address is this lot, so does somebody, you know, what's going on, right? I mean, so there are, you know, abnormalities, there are problems. I mean, here in Florida, right, we had years ago, we had the hanging chad you know, thing where it was there. But now they've kind of revamped. Now that we've moved here to Florida from California, um, the election process was very smooth. Um, you have your your ballot. You fill out the stuff. You can put it in a little uh, envelope that hides your ballot from being seen by anyone. You put it in, to, there's a little sleeve you put it in. This blacks it out so nobody can see through it. You put it in your regular envelope. You can put it in the mail and send it in. Or what we typically do is we will fill that out, get it all done, put it in the envelope. We will walk it in election day and drop it on and hand it off right at the election polling place, which is much better than open, unsecure, you know, drop boxes, which, you know, have them be during normal hours fine for a drop box, but have it at the polling place where there is someone watching over what is going on. So nobody's coming up to the box and dropping, you know, 500, 1,000 ballots in there. That's not you bringing something for your family. That's, that's, that right there is fraud. That's like you're, there's no way you can get, you know, all of that and doing that over and over again. That's, you know, 
there were several videos and several, I think, people actually being charged, right, out there with, you know, having, doing that guy videoing himself, you know, with his ballot stacked on, you know, his dash that he'd gone and collected all these. And so I think that person was, was arrested. So, so to say that there's never been any fraud, I mean, is, is a lie. To say that it's the most secure election or anything like that, don't even talk to me about that, right? Whether there was enough to move the needle in some states, I mean, they're supposed to be, they have recounted one of the counties in uh, Arizona, and that, if they would have counted that correctly at the time, that would have flipped the entire election, right? So that, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm just... You know, sentiment, right, also makes a big difference. The sentiment about how you feel about what happened, about how you feel about what is going on in, you know, any election. And uh, they talk about, you know, their, whether they're going to, the two things, bills that they want to pass are the uh, right for everyone to murder their children and the right for anybody, regardless of citizenship or anything, to be able to vote. And those two things are completely wrong. Um, you need to have some rules in place for voting, right? You need, like here in Florida, boom, you go to the, the tax collector, also known in other states as DMV. You get, you are there getting your driver's license. You can fill out, you check what you want to be registered as in your voting, and boom, you're automatically registered to vote. It's super easy. Right. If and I think if, even if you go in just for an ID, not a driver's license, you know, very. I think there's low cost IDs. There might even be free IDs and stuff. So that's very easy to do. Anybody can get it. So you can have an ID for when you vote. You have an ID. Right. I think that's all anybody wants. And to say anything else that there's a certain group or a certain you know classification of people that can't get an ID is hyper racist. Right? That's completely and totally racist that this group of people are too stupid, don't know how to use a computer, don't, can't even turn on their phone, so, they, so we need to be able to have them to vote because they're too dumb to do anything else. That's racism, and that's what gets pushed all of the time. Do I think everybody has the ability to go and get an ID? And get, of course. <laughs> Everybody's out there driving around. I mean, some homeless may not be able to quite get into to the system. That might be where it breaks down. And there are people who have very specific disabilities, you know, that may not be able to get there. But hopefully they have family, they have organizations and stuff that can help them get there, help them do, you know, what they need to get there. I mean, that's, you know, there are things in place, right, to keep the election secure, to keep... I Every time I go and elect, I always have my... Uh, ID out say this is me check me off the list this is see here this is my name this is my address that's my name that's my address right there boom I do that every single time I have voted I have no problem with it nobody in the room has any problem with it I ask talk to people in line all races and flavors and everything else and they'll say yeah we, yeah I got I got my ID if they want it I'll show it to them everywhere so for her to say this is about election deniers and January 6th and people are, you know, there's only a minority upset is is just disingenuous, it's completely, you know, crazy. So and the other part is, you know, of course, them very upset over the Supreme Court saying that ro removing, like backing off, you know, Roe v. Wade. So but they don't they don't ever come out and tell you the truth right? Which is all Roe v. Wade did, removing Roe v. Wade did, was make it so that the states get to decide what they want to do. So if you want to live in a state like California, where you can probably very soon be able to abort your child up until they're 18, then move there. If you want a state that's more sensible, I think Florida's 15 weeks. There's other places that have you know, other different rules, find the rules that you like, you know, and, and move there. I mean, we're a mobile country. You can get up, you can move things, you can go around. We moved all the way across the country, right? We moved, you know, the, it was like 2,600 miles. So all that is possible, right? Or live near a state, you know, just go to the state over. 
I mean, you probably work for a company that will pay for you to go there and come back because it's cheaper for them to do that than to have to pay for you to be out on maternity leave and then, you know, a year or two or whatever for you to stay at home and, you know, on parental leave. You know, it's cheaper for them to just send you off and get things done. Uh, you know, so they're being very disingenuous. I mean, I, I think any common sense person is going to say, okay, well, you know, we can take rape and incest, you know, kind of, if we move rape and incest away, right? I mean, one, uh, I've said this before, the, um, the occurrences of pregnancy after true rape true someone being attacked and ripping your, your whatever and forcing himself on you and all that tr the trauma of that on a woman's body causes everything to shut down and the instances of pregnancy in that are not even registrable right i mean solo i mean uh, many i mean there's all different levels right there's there's like a true rape there's like you went out on a date, you got drunk, and things happened, and you weren't planning for that, and, and all that. There's places where you didn't get drunk. You've been dating for two weeks, and you decided to jump in the sack, and that went wrong. You know the you know the other other parts where you've been dating for six months, and those things went wrong. You know, there's all these different levels of of how you can get you know where people get pregnant along the road, right? But the true rape one typically you know doesn't doesn't happen, and in that in that case, I mean. There, I've read some stories about where the woman who was raped actually had the child, and the child grew up to be an amazing, wonderful, incredible person, and kept thanking their mother. It's that, like, I know I came out of tragedy, but you've given me this amazing life, right? How, you know, can you justify that to yourself, right? You know, and the mother was like seeing what you know the amazing things that their child their daughter had done over their lifetime who became a huge advocate for rape victims and all these other things based on what had happened to their mother did huge amazing things so i need to eventually look up i gotta find that story again but it, it's you know so should just be hard-handed at it i mean okay i can i can still i can I mean, incest is really the crazy part right because that's attacking a child who doesn't know and won't get the you know the shock value of it so those instances are very you know very tragic right i mean they and then the panel that he has later on says well people are can't even do anything about incest when they're kids in their own state and it's like okay well we've already that's already come out that that was a complete lie that was an activist who found that who sent them to another state who you know pushed this up to so biden was mentioning it and you know they could have done anything they wanted to in the state but to make their point and try and prove their agenda they forced this child to go to another state to have this done so their arguments typically fall apart very quickly um it's, I mean, if you're one of the people who are just inconvenienced by it, well, you weren't inconvenienced when you were, you know, with whoever you were with. And triple pound on the guy who put you in that position and he needs to step up and be a man and not put people in that position. That's, you know, I'm a guy. I'm like, no, you need to, you know, the guy needs to take full responsibility. I mean, I'll, always, 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 I will say the best situation is a mom and a dad in a stable home for kids, right? That's that's always going to be the best place to be. But anyway, so they want to push it through. I don't know. Who knows what they're going. I mean, it may be like they may end up being like a 24-week thing. I mean, I, I hate the last trimester, or maybe they're going to go completely crazy and do, you know, the California bill says perinatal is the word that they use, which can be described as the few weeks leading up to birth and 
weeks or months after birth. So that's the law that's going in in California. So three months after the child is born, they'll be like, oh, this is inconvenient. I, I, I don't think so. That's murder. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see where they go. Okay, so uh, what else we got here? So they continue, she continues to just pound on, you know. Okay, also keep bringing up, you know, the the raid on Mar-a-Lago and, and how it's all tied in with January 6th and, you know, Trump's so awful and they keep trying to paint this narrative over and over and over again. You know, the uh, MAGA extremists and, and everything else. I have another video about, you know, defining a MAGA extremist and all of those points uh, that that I feel make me what I believe and a lot of those things just align directly with Trump's campaign. So I, I just like, I don't care who, you know, if those, if my values and things that I want in that list are aligned with the candidate's value, I don't care who the candidate is. I mean, I care about their, you know, history about what they've been able to accomplish before. And Trump did some amazing things up until they finally brought the, you know, COVID, uh, whole manufacturing of everything uh forward but so they want to keep talking about this that it's you know oh we got you know it's the rule of law we have to be you know the rule of law and justice and all this stuff we need to you know and he's asking about would it be good for the country to prosecute or do anything you know to indict trump and and all these things well we need to go the rule of law i don't have anything to do with that I'm like, okay, so where were you in the rule of law when there were riots going on throughout the country? Oh, that's right. You were saying they need to continue. So don't talk to me about justice. You've blown your whole credibility about that. There, you have no credibility about justice and the rule of law at all. You, you have no right at all to talk about justice and rule of law. You were helping and you were trying to get people who had... Killed police officers, caused millions and millions of damages in, in buildings and monuments and everything else in the country during that time, and you supported that. So, no, you have no right at all about rule of law. You're, in that sense, very much you are a horrible person. Okay. So, he asked him about, since, you know, Biden is pushing this, you know, MAGA extremist, you know, calling half, calling 70, basically 75 million Americans uh, extremists, asked about what, you know, the semi-fascist question, because that's what they're trying to label them as. Um, and she, oh, uh, she doesn't even know what the word means. She just goes back to January 6th, blah, 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 blah. So basically it comes down to if you disagree with anything that they want or do or they put forward, you're an extremist, you're a MAGA, you're a whatever. So they ask about uh, Joe Biden and how amazing he's been. He's always reached across the aisle, all of these different things. Uh, he's, one, always been a gaffe machine. And he, with the evidence of Hunter Biden's laptop, he's completely, completely corrupt, beyond corrupt. And I don't see, you know, I don't see how you can, you can come back from that, right? Again, you have no, no standing on that. So, um they, they're saying that, what about the filibuster? Of course, they're going to just, they're going to try and get rid of that as soon as possible. So they can start pushing through all of their hyper liberal uh, ideology and basically destroy the nation. So I, I think this election here in, in 2022 is going to be be the make or break, right? If, if they gain a whole bunch of, of seats, then I think the country is going to just spiral down and, and be done with. So, um, let's see, uh, they talk about the voting laws. I think I covered that about, oh, these states are putting in voting laws to keep people from voting. No, they're trying to keep voting uh, valid and consistent, right? Again, I got no problem having, you know, being able to show your ID when you vote. It's very easy to get an ID card or many states, when they put these laws in place that you must have a voter ID card, they go to, you know, they set up a free voter ID card, voter free ID for you. You just have to go get it. That's typically what happens in order to not exclude people. 
So, um, and here's the big, huge one. Here's the ginormous one. Uh, he asked, he, she was asked, so it, it, do you feel that the border's secure? She said, oh, the border's completely secure. She's just all about the border is 100% secure. The border is, you know, there's nothing wrong at all with the border. What we have to do is just give amnesty to everyone who's flow, who's come over the border. We need to provide amnesty for everyone who's here, provided they vote Democrat. That's going to be that's going to be the message. We got you your your citizenship for free and a phone and money and we just don't worry about coming back for your court hearing or anything. Just you know, just go do whatever. Oh, here's some free health care. Here's all this stuff, right? Of course, you're going to end up voting for them because they're giving you everything free. We're gonna here's some free college, you know, all this stuff, based on on the backs of people like myself, honest, hardworking, tax paying citizens. So at some point, that's not going to end well, and people are going to be tired of it. So, but that's their goal. Uh, the, the interviewer does bring up, he says, so we're going to pass 2 million over the border, a record. No, it have not been, ever been that many people over the border. So what do you say? Oh, it's still secure. She doubles down on it. She says it's still the most secure border. We just need to find a way to provide amnesty. So that's their that's their plan. That's their new immigration plan. Is if you can get over the border, you're a citizen. That's their that's their plan. But just completely disingenuous, completely crazy. She talks about how she's been in all these elections and stuff when they're talking about election stuff. She says, oh, she was just so amazing in, you know, the election. She's had elections, whatever, and stuff, and how she runs her campaign so well and stuff. Well, here, here's was the 2020 Democrat primary. Where is she? Oh, she's not on this list. She's way, way, we'll keep going down. We'll keep going down. Okay, here we go. Here we get into the, oh, here's the candidates. Here's the pinhead who won. And then we got these candidates, these candidates, these candidates, these candidates. Wait, she's not on those candidates? No. Here's the ones who withdrew. Where is she? Oh, she's way down here. She's like 17th on the list. She was so hated. She's just, she's insurance that they keep this, that they keep, let's go Brandon, in the office. Because nobody, everybody's going to do everything to keep him propped up because they, nobody wants Kamala Harris to be anywhere. I, I do not even talk to me about her running for president or anything else at any time because that she is so completely unlikable. And halfway all the way through all of this is, you know, we're going to do what we're going to do. And when we do that, we're going to keep doing that. And that's just what we do all the time when we're doing things. You know, that's how we do it. Word salad, garbage everywhere, just completely, completely disingenuous, completely e so easy to, you know, just look through the news and and look up information about what you know what she had and what what was going on and and all these things and just like oh so is the border secure oh two million people that doesn't sound very secure to me and they blame it all on well the previous everything was like well the previous administration was just not able to do this oh I think there was like record low illegal immigration over the border. I think there was a wall being built to keep people from coming over the border. I think there was a Remain in Mexico policy that was in place that kept people from coming in over the border. All these things, all these, see, it's all gaslighting. It's like, oh, he was so bad. He was so bad. He was, because they know he's going to run in 2024 and they don't want to deal with it. They think that he's, by continually pushing out the narrative that he's, all the people that are with him are evil. They're all, you know, these MAGA extremist people. You know, I just, it's just to demonize him. That's why they propped up all of these more extreme Republican candidates so that they would be in there so they can say, look, see, see, they elect all these extremist candidates and then try and beat them out, then push this narrative that they're extremists and then they're a threat to the country. They're the threat to democracy, even though we're not a democracy, we're a republic. I, amazing that she being the vice president doesn't actually know that. So, you know, it's just uh, too many, too many lies, too many things. What do you think? Um, am I right about any of this stuff? I mean, I'm willing to have conversations about it. I'm willing to get in and, and talk about things and look up information and, and everything else. It's what, you know, it's what I do. You know, you listen, you listen, you find and gather information from all different sides. And then you somewhere in the middle of that, you know, is the truth, right? 
All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you like this video, if you got any comments where I was wrong, where I was right. And uh, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.